Uh, my project is on the sex determination in Moorish idols. Um, the idea of my project is I'm going to be looking into the eternal anatomy of these fish. I'm hoping to identify the gonads in there, so it will help with captive breeding of these fish. And my materials and resources which I'm going to be using. My main, the main bits I'm going to be using is a small animal dissection kit. So my resources and choice are not going to be needing a lot really at all, just a tray and say this is what the fish will look like, not really nice at all. They'll be like sort of decomposed by the time I get them. But I'm just going to be using a scalpel and lots of small tweezers just so I can open it up and pull the skin off and look at all the different ideas in there. My associated external bodies organisations are employers. Um, I've got a range of them up here. TMC is where I'm going to be sourcing these fish from. It's a tropical marine centre and they've got places in London and Bristol and they get lots of different marine fish in. Mine, the more shadows I'm going to be getting from Hawaii. Um, but these are all the different places around the world which do it. You've got Bali, Akarish. Um, this is ocean, reef and aquariums. And rising tide conservation. And all these places around the world that look into breeding marine fish. And Bali, Akarish is the one which is most advanced at the moment. They actually bred the cleaner ass, the batfish, um, angelfish, and they bred the clarion angelfish most recently, which sold for four thousand um, dollars. Rising tide. These were on yellow tangs, so and this is post larval stage, and they've managed to get them up to fifty days, um, but they're un unsure of what they feed them on. Um, but so I think they're up to fifty-four days at the moment. Um, and I'll hopefully be initiating communications with them depending on how my project goes. And the Associated Research and Recommendation. They've been, the Rising Tide Conservation actually worked on yellow tanks to help determine the male or female, but they can't determine them completely. But the ideas are that male and female here is, so you've got sizes they can take into ideas. And then yellow tanks, this one here is a female and this one here is a male. Um, but I was looking into the, that Morris Riders because the tangs and surgeon fish are their closest relative. So I was looking, I'm going to look into this one, hopefully I'll cut them open and see what's inside and see if they have any similarities. Um, with clownfish with size, so they were born female, which is something I could take into consideration with the Morris Idol to see if they're male or female. Um, but so they were born female, and then the female, and then the males are smaller, and the females become more dominant. The methodology. This is what I'm going to be doing. I couldn't find a picture of a five from Morris Idol because I don't think it's been done much. But this is what I'm going to be doing here. I'm hoping to determine the gonads around here, so, but they are very small, so and it's, I couldn't find any pictures, so I'm not sure what they're going to look like, so but when I open it, I'm hoping to find that. And I'm going to be looking at any of the skeleton structures, well, to see if that determines male and female, because it's thought that the beak um, is determines male and female. Um, but so they have lots of different, say, internal differences, which I think they have different to tangs. They did have one relative, but they are now extinct, so there's not much information on them. And sorry, this picture here is a picture of a copper band butterfly, and that's its skeletal makeup after it's been dissected and put together. I'm hoping to do that with the Morris Island as well. Um, but this is my also my contingency plan is going to be the copper band butterfly because they're more readily available, as the Morris Idols are sometimes coming to season. They're only like seasonal fish, and sometimes they can get hold of them, and sometimes they can't. Whereas the copper band butterfly is on the top 50 fish for TMC to get. So um, that will be my contingency plan if I can't get any more titles. My schedule of operations. By April next year, I would ideally like to have completed my project. I'm currently working with, working with TMC to source the fish. However, say I'm going to go for the copper and butterfly if I can't get hold of the more titles. And I'm going to look into their feeding. Um, so they've got a long beak which they've adapted over to millions of years to sort of look for the shrimp and any life other animals in the, in the reef. Um, and I'm planning to start their sections early January and finish them by end of February, early March of the time. And from March onwards, I've given myself the time to write up a paper on my projects and findings from communications within the industry. In this time, I'll also be working on, on the statistical side of my project and have finished it by the beginning of April. So I'm hoping to contact many other people like Ocean Nutrition, um, King British, any other fish food as well, because I'm going to have, when I open up the Morris Island, I'm going to have a look into their stomach as well, see if there's any food in there which they would have consumed in the wild from when they've been shipped. An ethical review. 
Okay. It will also help if I do find a gonads, it could help with captive breeding of the fish because all these fish here have been cyanide caught, um, which is quite bad for the obviously debris because it affects all the corals. And this is an example of dynamite fishing, basically where they explode the reefs and all the fish raise to the surface so they're easier to pull. This is an example in Hawaii where, say, they didn't need the fish and they just, they just discarded them. Um, net catching is what, what they're hoping for, what to do, because, say, it doesn't really affect the environment so much. And in conclusion, it will help the industry because, say, if we can capture breed them, it takes the stress off the reefs. And these are all examples of captive bird fish. That's it. Thank you.